Hey guys, Russell again. So today I've got a really, really awesome interview for you. I've got a couple of great guys joining me. First, we have Lance, who's the co-founder of ThetaTraders.com, and that's traders with a Z because we're just that cool. And it's a new service where Lance alerts trades that are of a similar style to the ones that Raj will be talking about today. I'll put a link in the description below so you can go and check that out. And then we're going to be grilling Raj about his trading and investing success over the last few years. So I got talking to Raj I think last week in the Facebook group, and I just really couldn't resist having him on to talk to us about his trading and investing strategies, just because he's doing pretty well. And it just, it's always cool to, to hear about things. And I think, um, I think we'll just introduce you guys now. So welcome. And Lance, do you want to start off and give us a few words about yourself um, before we begin? Yeah. Hi, Russell. Hi, Raz. Um, just checking in here a little bit. Uh, I've been doing option selling for a few years now. Uh, I also did some covered call strategies in the past as well. And I constantly look for pretty high probability trades that earn very good returns. Um, we're looking at two to 4% per month and very high probabilities. Um, as you'll see when Roz discusses a lot of the trades that I recommended to him, we have a pretty high win rate right now. He's looking at a 92.11% win rate there. And um, Look forward to talking to you guys. Cool. Yeah, well, let's just get into and start grilling Raj. So <laughs> how's it going, Raj? And you started telling us a little oh. bit about how you started your trading and investing. Oh, stuff. well, hey, Lance um, Lance and Russell, thank you so much for having me uh, today, for starters. Uh, it's a huge honor. Um, giving a little bit of background about myself. Um, first off, I do want to mention that um, trading is an amazing, amazing um activity to do. Um, what I always tell people, though, is the first thing that you really want to think about is investing. Um, right. So historically, um, I have been actively investing in uh, the S&P 500, um, mutual funds, um, those types of things with dollar cost averaging. I'm a very fond believer in compound interest and growing the nest egg. And so I've been investing for probably eight plus years. Um, and the way that I typically did grow my wealth, if you will, is by um, every single month when I um, started my first full-time job, I would put money away. Um, even before you think about it, you just put money away. And doing that consistently in something that um, is as reliable as um, SPX, the S&P 500, helped tremendously. The actual trading, I'll say, probably started more or less um, a few years ago, more out of, um, quite honestly, pure boredom. Um, I discovered Robinhood and I discovered, you know, how to trade options. And naturally, the first thing most people they do when they um, get the power, if you will, of trading options is they go out and buy calls and you get this amazing adrenaline rush where essentially you're uh, buying a bunch of calls and either you guessed right and you have an awesome return or you guessed wrong. And on that Friday, you discover that all of that money that you put into buying that particular option is now effectively $0. And mm -hmm. for me, it was kind of a growing experience. But meanwhile, while I was doing some of those uh, losing trades, if you will, I was also continuing to grow the nest egg with dollar cost averaging in mutual funds. Um, more or less um, meeting Lance, he helped me tremendously. I've known Lance for at least a few months now. Um, he's um, active in um, a variety of Facebook groups and he always, always answers questions to me. He's kind of sparked my interest in selling options even more so than I did have before. And um, for that, I'll be um, ex extremely, extremely grateful. And then Russell, uh, the groups that you have, uh, the sidekick traders and some of the other groups that you're involved with, including beta uh, traders. I mean, it's, it's just an incredible opportunity for anybody who wants to learn um, how to um, make, uh, make something out of uh, trading, if you will. You know, just so many different resources, a lot of great people, uh, a lot of positive energy. Yeah, so uh, awesome. with that being said, I also wanted to uh, share my screen here. Um, my moniker is uh, the Lion King, which is um, something that's well fitting for um, my name. Um, king actually, uh, Raj means king. <laughs> and my last name also uh, is 
uh, lion, so it, it fits pretty well. Nice. But um, the nice part about this particular platform that you see here, it's called dogify.com, is this is a great way for me um, to track my performance. I am not a pro trader. Uh, the pro traders, we, I can also show at some point, but I don't want to focus too much on that. I just want to mention that I'm using this particular platform right now to log um, every single trade that I do. And the nice part is uh, getting a chance to see some of the stats um, in particular about how I've been performing. A little bit of some roller coaster rides um, for starters, but um, the nice part as well is just seeing the um, overall net PNL since I've been on this platform um, in June. Um, more or less, I've been staying consistent selling options. And I think that that actually has helped tremendously. The couple things I wanted to at least mention um, to the viewers of this um, particular segment is um, selling options is, um, I mean, it can be very complicated or it can be um, fairly straightforward and simple. I always tell people the first thing that you want to think about when you're talking about selling options is thinking about selling covered calls because conceptually it's actually the easiest activity. And um, if you don't mind, Russell, um, I, I did prepare a few slides that I just wanted to go over um, with everybody. Um, is it okay if I share those as well? Please do, yeah, that sounds great. Excellent, excellent. So um, the, the, the only thing that I, you know, if you get a chance, what you'll be able to do is you can actually learn a lot of this stuff from Lance um, in particular, some of the videos, the segments that he does uh, with data traders, you'll be able to see a lot of great information and didactics from um, Lance's work. So I don't wanna take away from that or even duplicate the uh, efforts, if you will. I'll just share uh, one particular example of selling covered calls. And I can also go over after that, some of the examples of the real trades that I've done with Lance's guidance as well. And I'll show those um, on the Dogeify platform too. So for starters, um, I'm gonna start this with a quote. Uh, I actually came up with this quote myself, but I think it's worthy of uh, thinking about and just registering in your mind, <laughs> particularly because most people are actually on the other side of the table where you bought the call of Apple uh, because earnings um, were taking place and you were very bullish and unfortunately you were wrong. And the 200 plus dollars that you put into buying that $2 option are now $0. Um, mm -hmm. That unfortunately happens to people almost every Friday. And so I'm the guy that is trying to sell hope to others by selling those options. And most of the time, this hope is actually depreciating and expiring worthless every Friday. It's basically like I'm the car dealer. As soon as you buy the car, um, I've already made my money. And quite honestly, if you bring the car back to me, guess what? We'll be happy to buy that car back, but I'm gonna buy that car back at a fraction of the price that we sold it to you for. That, that's a great analogy. Thanks for that. It seems that's great. Never thought of it that way. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I actually tell Lance, um, I, I mean, what I do, um, I, I can even show or just illustrate some examples as well, but we don't think about um, the example which happens um, nine times out of 10, which is if I'm selling you something for $100 and if I buy that item back for $50. Most people think that, well, that's just a 50% gain, which it is true. I mean, you're seeing something go from $100 down to $50. But if you actually do the math um, on what I just said, it basically is um, going, um, it's like you buy something for 50 bucks. And if I sell it to you for a hundred bucks, that's actually a 100% return. Mm. So imagine if I do that every single day, you know, where literally we are uh, selling options every day. That, that to me is so powerful and that's actually why it's sustainable. Yeah. So I'm gonna see if I can keep going. 
Okay, so this is one example. Um, this is actually not a good company. Um, I'm going to tell that to everybody with full disclosure. Lance is also trading this as well. I am and as so well. <laughs> take some partial credit for uh, directing me in this <laughs> particular direction, although this trade was not advised by Lance at all. It was actually me more or less being crazy. So uh, let's just take a look. So Moxie, first off, is a Chinese-based company. It is extremely volatile. It has a very high um, implied volatility, which means uh, it's, a, it's a type of stock that when you hold it, it's basically like you're holding dynamite. So um, this is a real trade. Um, these are my real trades that took place. Uh, first off, I decided on June 24th, I wanted to buy 100 shares of this particular stock. At the time, it was $24.37. So um, just lock that number in, $24.37 a share. Then at that point, I also said, okay, well, I'm gonna take advantage of this opportunity and I'm going to start selling covered calls. So the very first covered call that I actually sold was right here. I, I sold it the same day. I sold it actually on June 24th. And if you notice on the Dogeify platform, the really nice part is I can actually see the time that I was in this particular trade. That is cool. That's very cool. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. So this was a day trade, Russell. So yeah. for starters, day trading, um, obviously most people, you already know this, but you got to have at least 25K um, in your account. Otherwise, you could be labeled a pattern day trader if you do more than three of these types of trades in a week. Fortunately for me, I have enough um, capital to support these types of trades. But yep. just take a quick peek here. So literally, my very first play, the, the stock was $24. I actually sold a way, way deep in the money call. So I collected $1,527 and I didn't want to hold on to that because I felt kind of like that. I, I, did, I just didn't want to do it. So as soon as I saw a nice depreciation of about a hundred bucks in less than it, you know, in two hours, I bought it back. So I sold it for $1,527 yep. and I bought it back for $1,430. Cool. Six percent. You know, then I have those shares and I can do whatever I want with them. And guess what I did, Russell? What I did at that point, the same day, I decided to sell a $25 call. Keep in mind, I bought this stock for $24.37. So, you know, I'm, I'm okay with getting a negligible amount of profit. You know, if you think about it, you buy a stock at 24 bucks, yep. you sell it at 25, that's not a whole lot of profit, but I also already got this premium here, that's right. in the bank. Yep. And I collected, just with this particular trade, I collected seven hundred thirteen dollars. Yeah, <laughs> nice. That's, that's insane. Um, so, with that being said, uh, this stock as well, uh, the or the the call depreciated. The reason the call depreciates typically is when the volatility either decreases, uh, meaning it becomes a little bit less valuable that particular option, or or if the stock price goes down. So, yeah. you know, stock is tanking. And so guess what? I bought it back again. And I actually closed this one within a day. <laughs> nice. So I had a quick question about this. So did you buy the shares at 2437 with the idea of going long on that? Or, or was the whole plan to always do this covered call strategy going? The plan was actually to do the covered call. Right, right. Um, the, the panic for me actually was this initial play. I, I would say that this was probably something that if I could do it over again, um, I know that there's some people out there that do strategies like this where they are actually selling a deep in the money call. I personally, I just, I, I don't like that. I didn't feel like I wanted to take, because if you think about it, I'm buying the stock at $2,400 and I'd be selling it at $1,000. So I'm already taking a $1,400 loss Right. But the cool part about that is I'm actually collecting some money, um, 1500 yeah. bucks. Yeah. So it's almost like if you just did this and did nothing, you probably would be profitable. Right. But I just kind of wanted to, um, to flip things. I, I have a fascination with selling high and buying low. 
it's just you know, <laughs> from it's, your investment and like long-term investing background right <laughs> just, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I mean something like that you know it's it really feels like when i when i do these types of trades i mean i, I jokingly i've told lance it's like i'm running a, a, an option store um yeah. literally what you see on the left here this is the these are the prices that i'm putting out these are the sticker prices that i'm going to be selling this to you for and guess what these are the wholesale prices that i bought these nice. items for so um just i mean put that in perspective sell high buy low sell high buy low the more you're actually able to do that successfully the more um the longer you're going to last and the more successful you'll be as a trader so with that being said, we'll just kind of keep going through this. You can kind of see, I mean, this is a decent amount of um, premium and look at the number of days for each of these trades. We're talking June 24th, June 24th to June 25th, June 25th, and I think it was a weekend. So June 28th, okay. Nice. 561 bucks right there. Yep. The saga continues. We have two more trades that I closed. Uh, these actually took a little bit longer to close, but at the same time, in these eight days, this eight day span, I collected some money here and I collected some money here as well. Yep. So all in all, I collected a total of $991 in closed trades. Okay. Yep. By close, I mean, I have nothing I, that's guaranteed money. That's actually um, effectively on a balance sheet if you will, those are closed sales. Okay. Um, so I bought the stuff and I've sold it. So all of those are real trades. Currently I am in a trade, um, expiring August 20th, uh, $25 call. And I collected 232 bucks for it. Uh, these premiums are insane. Um, I, once again, I don't really recommend this ticker for people, <laughs> uh, because this is a high risk trade but it also illustrates the power of selling options, which is why I wanted to share this with everybody. And um, it also shows how much you can collect from a very volatile uh, stock like MOXC. Yeah, I love it. And it's um, one question I actually had for you. So you, I'm pretty new to selling options and like one, one advantage with the, with options in general is that you can, you know, you can get your, your account settled the next day right so i'm guessing with i haven't really checked this one but as you sell these options your cash will have settled the next day right like so you should be able to use that cash immediately the next day is that right yeah, i For i things. believe that's the case um i'll also share on my side i'm doing things a little bit more sophisticated um than probably most traders i actually use portfolio margin yeah. um which essentially if you get a chance um russell you, you should uh, maybe even do a video about it at some point, but essentially what I'm doing is I'm leveraging my portfolio, um, all of the stocks that I own, I can actually leverage those to trade more, if you will. Cool. Um, and you can get a pretty awesome amount of leverage from that. It's not something that I would necessarily recommend to an everyday investor, but at right. the same time for financial literacy, um, as I talk to people that are trading, they should also be aware of all of the possibilities, uh, all of the instruments that are, you know, all the, the tools that are available. Yep. And so for me, when I get the cash, if you will, um, I'm not actually paying myself. Um, I've actually thought uh, fairly recently, maybe I'll start withdrawing some of the winnings, <laughs> if you will, yeah. to give myself a little bit of a reward. But I'm using all of the cash typically to sell more options, if you will, just to kind of grow the account. That's yeah. kind of the way that I'm handling a lot of what I'm doing. But I think that you are correct in your um, statement about just getting that cash. Um, I believe it probably settles within 24 hours. Right. Hey, Russell, uh, just to answer that one, you actually get your premium immediately. Right, um, right. Some trades that I'll do sometimes where you do enough contracts, you'll make enough in premium where you could actually sell another covered call or cash secured put with the premium the exact same day to really right. amplify those returns. Right. I, I was awesome. kind of meaning though, you know, how you, you so you say you lock up $3,000 and, you know, you sell, sell a put, that's why I've been doing so it's easier. So you sell a put, you lock up $3,000 in that position 
if you if you you know liquidate that the same day you make your i don't know 200 bucks or whatever you keep your premium or whatever you know and then the next day is it just like as if you were buying options your 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 buying power would be returned to to normal like is that correct i i i think so i think right. so russell that's why i assumed um, but <laughs> yeah and especially um most most of the time i believe if you're doing options you probably have some level of margin capability right. uh, whether or not your broker even states it as a margin right. i right. think that just because of the way that um options work especially when you start selling um puts i know we call them cash secured puts and they are yep. quote unquote level one type trades yep. i i still am not totally I, I think that every single person that's selling option is probably using some type of a margin that's my uh, that's right. my yeah, I was just thinking because I know Lance's strategy is for, you know, really good for smaller accounts of so people that maybe only have 10,000 or less. And I'm actually trading his stuff with a small, small account at the moment as a cash account. So um, I'm finding it really, really good to kind of churn through kind of like what you're doing is I'm not holding things that long. I'm just taking a few percent and then churning it over and over with selling puts. Yeah. So, yeah. Well so you know and what i've also told lance in the past i mean um and i totally understand the way the way we do bookkeeping you talk to a hundred people and we'll tell you bookkeeping is probably uh up to the person however you want to present things uh personally if i am selling things i mean the way that i take each of these trades like uh let, let's just say if this was a um 1.6 here Yep. Um, so this would be a minus 3.2, which means I sold something for $320 yep. and I bought it back for 160 bucks. Um, most people, they say that that's a 50% depreciation. You know, here it says 44, but yeah, 50% 50, 50 depreciation. I actually think about those trades to be 100% trades. And the reason for it is because um, the only way that we can account for buying options, um, you know, Go back to our uh, trades where we were scalping with Malcolm. Um, you know, when you scalp something, um, you're basically putting the money up front. So right. imagine if we put that money up front for a dollar sixty call option, if you yeah. will, and then we exit it at three hundred twenty. That's a one hundred percent interest um, return on investment. Um, that's, that's just crazy. how we perceive things. So in that same light, if I was trying to chart my trades line by line, that is exactly how I chart them. So I always tell people, um, even though these aren't like, if you see 44%, you're like, eh, that's not that much. I mean, this is a lot of money because I mean, if we ran a store, basically I bought something for $180 and I just sold it to you for 320. I mean, that's a, it's that's a an great amazing way. Yeah, that's a great way to think about it. It's like an online store that you just like, you know, <laughs> you don't have inventory. It's all virtual kind of, you know, <laughs> it's, it's a really good. Well, well yeah, you're, you're spot on. I mean, this, this is my Amazon selling network, yeah. you know, if you will. I'm a, I'm a retailer, you know. Yeah, I love it. So, <laughs> so this is just the last slide. I just wanted to show people just to really lock in the, the idea of what we've done here. And the neat part is, first off, like I kind of mentioned earlier, I'm not fond of this company. Um, most of the time, um, what uh, most people they say, especially when you teach others about, you know, doing the option wheel strategy, you always tell people to have a company that you're fond of owning. You don't mind owning a hundred shares of this stock. Um, I'll be honest, this is not a company that I actually feel particularly excited about. So <laughs> despite my unexcitement of this company, um, just take a look, I've taken a $2,437 um, investment. And I've collected already $991 of that investment. Um, so now effectively I own a hundred shares at $14.46 per share. And on top of that, I also have $232 that I collected, but I'm not even counting those right now because the trade is still open. So I, I, don't, I don't like to count those trades because until the trade actually closes, that's when it really is for me something that's worthy of true bookkeeping. Yeah. Um, and Friday's close, the stock closed at seventeen dollars and eighty four cents. So. Cool. Yeah. I think I'm in that one as well. I think I'm about break even on some puts that I sold on it a week or two ago. So. I see. Yeah. I see. Yeah. That's great. That's great. 
Um, any questions? I uh, well, What I wanted to do as well, if we have time, is mm -hmm. uh, possibly going over some of the trades that Lance has given or um, what, whatever else you guys want to talk about, too. Yeah, I mean... I mean, that's an awesome win rate, 92%. And really, that's only ever seen when you're doing these types of strategies, right? I've not really seen anybody consistently hitting that with day trades, with stocks or anything like that. That's pretty phenomenal. I love it. That's, well, well, thank you. I mean, one one true testimonial. I mean, I, I am so appreciative to Lance. Um, what, what happened was, I want to say, a couple months ago, I actually did a family trip um with uh our family of six we did a trip to alaska okay yeah and so there's a lot of spots on alaska first off it's absolutely beautiful there but um there are a lot of spots in alaska where you have very limited cell reception during the course of that week when i was actually with limited cell service and everything else um i managed to make 1400 bucks um that was good <laughs> <laughs> most of the trades that I've done were actually from Lance. And the way that I would do them is you basically uh, sell to open whatever the cash secured put that he alerts. And then you do the same thing as a buy to close and you do good till cancel, of course. Right. Um, so literally while you're doing that, I mean, the trades are just kind of closing. Um, you might not even know that they're closing, if you will. <laughs> right yeah yeah and it and, that's right. you just disappear and suddenly you've made the premium you're like yes <laughs> half the premium 50 percent usually is what we're going for right <laughs> I, I spot on spot on and this is where i really want i mean i i cannot stress that 50 percent buy to close a lot of people they kind of want to eke out more um and i don't blame them i mean quite honestly why wouldn't you want to have um you know if i have the opportunity to collect you know, $150 of premium, why would I stop at $75? Um, mm -hmm. And so that's the, I, I think that's kind of the, the subject for debate, you know, what's better? Is it better to just leave it open until the end or close it quickly? For me, because obviously I'm trading a lot. I mean, 152 trades is actually a decent number of trading trades, yeah. I think. Yeah. Because of that, I find a lot of um, value in closing the trade quickly uh, because as soon as you close that trade, you can pretty much have that cash back and you can open up another one because there is also some possibility as well um, that you can be assigned. So uh, right. the example is if I sold a um, put on um, Apple, let's just say, I'm going to say Apple, I'm just going to guesstimate the price to be about 145 or so. Imagine if I sold a put on Apple at 146. Um, what that means is um, I'm actually obligated to buy this particular stock, 100 shares of Apple at $146, regardless of what the price, you know, if the price was 143, I'd still have to buy it at 146. So that, uh, that is actually why there is a lot of benefit, I think, in having those early buy to close um, pieces especially when you're playing with the high volatility stocks um, that um, Lance um, uh, alerts. You know. Right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So how, how long did it take you to do those 152 trades? Is that this year or? Um, that's not even this year. That's here's the um, last week or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, last week. Right. Um, we, I started on this particular platform. I think I started late June. Yeah. Okay. And so, um, you know, I've had, I've had my ups and downs as well. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you, even though my win rate is, um, fortunately, it's pretty, pretty nice. And I mean, overall, I have been profitable in my trades. Yeah. Um, I, I will say uh, there's been some huge lessons learned. Um, I think I even told you I have ended up with a, um, a short position on Wayfair that I've been kind of dealing yeah. with uh, for quite some time now. And uh, last week I got out of half of my short position of Wayfair, which is actually an alleviating thing uh, because if you look at the way Wayfair stock was, um, even back in January when I was short, I mean, that was a um, very um, scary moment in time. and. I actually don't wish this on anybody uh, because imagine if you're um, dealing with a stock 
let's see if I can find it. Uh, there was one day in January of this year when it went up to like three hundred sixty nine dollars, mm -hmm. you know. Yep. And so imagine being short that position at three hundred sixty nine dollars. I can't find it off the top of my head. It was an awful, awful um, experience. So I always tell people, I want you to learn from my mistakes. I mean, um, don't do those things. But what I was doing was I was also selling cash secured or not cash secured. I was selling covered puts on this particular stock to try to make money um, regardless. And um, I actually took what would have been a uh, $24,000 loss, <laughs> <laughs> a huge amount of money. Yeah. I actually took that $24,000 loss and um, at the end of this upcoming week, I actually could be profiting at least $5,000. I love it. I love it. And that's why I've started to get more into these types of strategies is hearing about guys like you and, and Lance and David Jaffe and these types of people taking these losses and just like flipping them over and then getting this 92% win rate. You know, it's amazing. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. And, and I'll tell you, I mean, so for me, as I think about some of this stuff, it's actually liberating um, to not be the guy that, I mean, imagine if you're short selling a stock and it moons up to 369, like it is here on this chart. Um, so I, I find it liberating, but I also, I'm learning from that experience. So the lesson learned to everybody is take your stop loss as soon as possible, because um, this is the type of stuff that can actually uh, break an account. Uh, it can ruin relationships. Um, yeah. It can financially ruin you. Mm. And so for me, at the end of the day, uh, the lesson here is, um, you know, don't do it for starters. Uh, if you are doing it, be brave um, and be willing to um, set limits. So um, by the same token, I was also trading gold futures and I actually took a very big loss, um, unfortunately, this past week. But here's what I'll also tell you. The nice part about getting out of a futures trade that's not going well is now I can actually sleep at night <laughs> yeah. without looking at my phone. Yeah, I my can wake up in the morning without mm. looking at my phone. So it's actually liberating uh, to sometimes take losses. Uh, but the smaller those losses are, the better off I think you're going to be um, Definitely. As a or an investor. Definitely. Yeah, so that's, that's fantastic. And thanks for sharing your story. I think it's really inspiring. And it, it's just great to hear from you. And I was wondering, like, do you have any comments, Lance? I know you've been pretty quiet because we've been... <laughs> I've... Um, well, Roz has been very attentive to a lot of the details that we look at when we're looking for these trades. Well, a lot of what we do are cash secured puts that are really far out of the money. So if a stock is going for $28, we might sell a cash secured put at $20. So you get a very good buffer there and a good chance of the probability of the trade working out your way, especially because the people that are buying these puts, they're essentially buying lotto tickets where they're hoping that the stock will plummet way below 20, but the odds of that happening are usually pretty infrequent. So we're essentially that casino where those lotto, um, you know, those convenience store people that are taking those lotto tickets, getting a small amount from it, you're not going to necessarily get 100 200% gains per week here, but a lot of small consistent gains over long periods of times with many trades ends up being a very good return when it's all said and done. I'll, uh, I'll, I'm going to show this one, Lance. I think this one actually came from you, um, I believe. <laughs> and so just to put this in perspective here, this was a $26 put on Fubo. Um, I gained 123 bucks and I bought it back uh, for 60 dollars nice. did that in uh the course of um a few weeks so obviously that was a long trade yeah. but once again i bought something for 60 sold it for 123 i mean that that yeah. was an awesome trade um i believe you also gave i think you gave us qs at some yeah. point um this particular one i may have made a spread out of this i i I don't yeah, quite remember if you alerted it or not. Uh, what I tend to do, um, Russell, is I, because I, I'm trading a lot and because I actually don't really like the idea of tying up $2,350 of capital, <laughs> um, what I like to do more so is actually take the spread. So what the spread does by adding a buy leg to this, for example, we're only tying up $400 of capital because that's the difference of the spread. Well, here, this is actually tying up 
$2,350 worth of capital. So yep. um, with that being said, um, look at this particular one. We sold it for $50. I actually did three of them because I had extra capital. So imagine if we did this uh, particular trade just by itself, it would be $1,900 capital just yep. with the cash secured put. But because I only had $400 of margin, yep. I did three of them. So I got used $1,200 of capital. And nice. from that, I gained um, 66 bucks overall, which, which isn't a bad, I mean, that's not a bad. Yeah, no, it's, that's great. And I think, um, I think in the description below, I'm going to include some links to some of Lance's strategy. So, cause we've done kind of a high level overview and your success doing this kind of thing, but we haven't really had a lot of time to put in like all the details. So we've done discussions with Lance and he has a lot of stuff, you know, on his YouTube channel and things that he talks about. So I think it's probably a good place to wrap it up and just, you know, let people know that they can check out the description below and kind of go through and, and find all the resources to fill in the gaps from, from this, this conversation. So yeah. 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 Thank, well, thanks thank very you. much. Yeah. Thanks. It's been great. And um, thanks Lance for joining us. Um, we'll have to oh, do thanks. more of these. Yeah. Thank you, Russell. You yeah. know, I really do appreciate your time. So. I appreciate all right. it, Russell. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. Yeah. Thanks very much. Thanks. Good night. Bye-bye. All right. Cheers. Bye.